Hey what's going on everybody, in today's video I'm going to be going over the basics of how bonds work and explaining the basics of the bond market. So what you need to understand right off the bat is a bond is a debt instrument and like any other form of debt there's a lender and a borrower. A borrower asks for money and promises to pay it back with interest and the lender lends his money in hopes of receiving back money and making a profit. So the bond market is essentially just a market where organizations such as countries and corporations ask for money so they can engage in their operations. To entice investors to give their money, they offer interest rates on the money they give. Now there are many many types of bonds in the market, but I'm going to go over the plain bonds. These are also called vanilla bonds because these are the majority and they're all structured the same way. So for the most part, these bonds are sold in $1,000 denominations and they offer something called a coupon. A coupon is essentially the dollar amount that they give you. Now bonds are very predictable and transparent in their structure. They tell you how often they're going to give you the payments. This is called the payment frequency and they tell you how long the bond is going to be. It could be one year, three years, five years, etc. The payment frequency just tells you how many times they're going to pay you over a single year. So if a bond is an annual bond, they'll pay you once a year, if it's semi-annual, twice a year, quarterly, four times a year, so on and so forth. Now what determines the payment of bonds is interest rates. So bonds have a very interesting relationship with interest rates. If a company issues a bond in a thousand dollar denomination and a year later interest rates go up, the price of this bond will go down. Why? Because now that interest rates are higher sometime in the future, all new bonds in the market are going to offer interest rates associated with the higher interest rate, which makes your bond less valuable. It's considered opportunity cost. The reverse is true as well, so when interest rates go down, your bond price goes up. That's because the interest rate associated with your bond cannot be found in the market and more people demand the bond that you have. So in that regard, bonds are considered to be subject to interest rate risk. As interest rates move around, the prices of your bond can change. This doesn't actually change the coupon price, you are given those in a fixed way, but it does change the price of the bond. Another thing that's associated with bonds is credit risk. Like I said, because there is a lender and a borrower, the borrower is not always the same. Within a corporation, there are many different types of borrowers. You could have Apple, who is a very low risk borrower because they're a stable company, or you could have a random startup company who needs money to borrow, and they're probably higher risk. So the stable borrowers offer less rate of interest because they're safer, and the high risk borrowers have to offer more money to entice investors because they're known as being higher risk. And the same applies to governments and countries. The US government is considered one of the safest borrowers of money, they have never defaulted on their payments. At the same time, you have countries like Greece and Venezuela who are very shaky economies, and therefore they have to offer a high rate of interest, otherwise no one's going to buy their debt and it's going to be a failure. So when a company is in high risk, they are considered subject to default. Default essentially means when they can't make their payments. So as the price of a bond changes, if the interest rates change, this changes the yield on the bond as well. So let's say a bond costs $1,000 and it has an $80 annual coupon. This means it has a yield of 8%. However, if the price changes on the bond on the denominator side, this changes the yield as well. It can make it more profitable or less profitable. The price of the bond essentially adjusts to the yield in the market. So when interest rates are 8%, this bond pays an 8% yield and everything is okay. However, if interest rates raise to 10%, this bond needs to offer a yield of 10%. So what changes? The denominator up to a point where it can offer a same competitive market rate. So it's always good to monitor the yield of a bond because the price is always fluctuating. And I just want to make some final comments about bonds. Bonds for the most part aren't going to make you rich and they're not going to make you poor. They are a stable income stream. So bonds are highly popular amongst people who are risk sensitive. They don't want to buy stocks because stocks change too much. Bonds offer you a safer and more consistent form of income. In my opinion, the best mix up is to have stocks and bonds in your portfolio. You don't want to be too heavily focused to one side. And I also don't recommend bond investing for people with small amounts of money. And the reason for this is because bonds are safer, they offer lower rates of interest and therefore they are a lower return investment. You don't want to go into lower return investments when you have a little bit of money. And at the same time, I would recommend bonds if you have a lot of money. The bond, the bond market is very attractive for very rich people and that's because they're very sensitive to risk and they're more cautious about losing money because they have so much of it. So they dabble into bonds a lot. So this video was just made to go over the basics of a bond. Not all bonds are structured exactly like this. This was considered the plain vanilla bond. Some other bonds out there are variable bonds where interest rates change with the market. Convertible bonds where you can convert the bond into other equity and stocks. Asset backed bonds. These are bonds that are backed by an asset such as a mortgage. And disaster bonds. These are bonds that are insured by a disaster say as a hurricane or tsunami. There are so many bonds out there in the market and you really need to spend a lot of time if you want to understand them. But this video was just to go over the basics. Thank you so much for listening guys and I hope you have a nice day. Take care.